This is a quick demonstration of the superficial structures in the forearm, cubital fossa, and the arm, specifically some veins and nerves. Let's take a look at this vein here in front of us. This is the cephalic vein, which runs on the lateral side of the forearm. And then it runs in the deltopectoral groove. And we can see that running in the deltopectoral groove here. And then it continues up, and then it goes through the deltopectoral triangle, and here it pierced through the costocorocoid membrane to open into the axillary vein. So this is one superficial vein. This cephalic vein is a very important superficial vein because it is used for venisection and venipuncture. And we can see that it is accompanied by this nerve here. This is the cutaneous part of the musculocutaneous nerve as it's emerging between the brachialis and the biceps. And it runs along and in close proximity with the cephalic vein. And therefore, when we are doing attempted venipuncture here, and if there is an extravasation of blood, as you can see in this cadaver, there is extravasation of blood, and then it can irritate the musculocutaneous nerve and can produce numbness, tingling, and paresthesia in this region. So this is the cephalic vein. Now let's take a look at yet another vein on the medial side of the arm, and I picked it up here. This is the basilic vein. The basilic vein is formed in a similar way like the cephalic vein on the medial side of the arm. And it runs on the medial side, and this runs up, and it, is, it receives a contribution from the cephalic vein. And then it becomes bigger, and sometimes it also communicates with the venae comitantes of the brachial artery. And we can see the venae comitantes here. We can see one vein here accompanying the brachial artery, and we can see another vein here accompanying the brachial artery. These are the vene comitantes of the brachial artery. I picked up one here, I picked up one here. So this is a feature of all the venous system of the lower limb and the upper limb. So these vene comitantes, they unite with the basilic vein, and then they, as it goes up, it becomes bigger and bigger, and it forms the axillary vein. Having mentioned the basilic vein, let me give you a quick overview of the surgical landmarks that we use to perform a basilic venisection because it's quite deep and it's covered by fat, therefore we need to have these landmarks in place. One landmark is the medial epicondyle, where my finger is located. The other landmark is the biceps tendon. We can feel that in every person. We take a, join them with a straight line. We take the midpoint of that line and we go one inch above that and we make an incision and when we do that, we reach the basilic vein. So therefore, this landmark and these markings are used to do a venisection of the basilic vein. And this communication between the cephalic vein and the basilic vein, which runs on the surface or the roof of the cubital fossa, is called the median cubital vein. This pattern that we can see here is referred to as the H-shaped pattern. We can have a variant pattern in some people where there is a median anticubital vein, which then divides into a median basilic and a median cubital. So it is just a matter of semantics. The next point which I wanted to emphasize was this nerve. We can see a nerve running with the basilic vein, just like there was a nerve running with the cephalic vein. This is the branches of the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. Higher up, there is another corresponding nerve, which is known as the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm. These are both of these are branches from the medial cord of the brachial plexus and they run along with the basilic vein. So when there is a brace injury to the basilic vein, then these nerves can be irritated. The next point I wanted to draw your attention to was this facial structure, which we have cut and reflected. This is the biceps aponeurosis. And how do we know? If I trace this, this is the tendon of the biceps. And we can see that the main tendon is going into the radial tuberosity and it is simultaneously giving an expansion which is running inframedially. This biceps aponeurosis expansion merges with the deep fascia on the surface of the forearm and that is this here. This is the pronated muscle. This biceps aponeurosis serves several important functions. Number one, it protects the structures in the cubital fossa, namely the median nerve and the brachial artery, and we can see it is protecting. And as you can see, this median cubital vein runs on the surface of the biceps aponeurosis. This is quite often used by 
paramedics and nurses for venipuncture and as you can see in this also they had done attempted venipuncture and there has been extravasation of blood. So therefore this biceps aponeurosis protects the deeper structures from injury and we can see that here. Another function of this biceps aponeurosis is by virtue of the fact that it merges with the fascia here, it exerts traction and therefore it reduces the pressure of the biceps tendon itself on the radial tuberosity. This biceps aponeurosis, it forms the roof of the cubital fossa and it reinforces the roof of the cubital fossa and all the veins and the nerves they run on the surface of the biceps aponeurosis. So these are some of the roles performed by this biceps aponeurosis and we can see that here. So these are some of the superficial structures which I wanted to show you. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Dr. Sanjay Sanyal signing out.